to us Jews, turning to God, davening, praying, and uh, feeling the connection is probably one of the most important experiences of Judaism. It's about you relating to God and asking Hashem when you need something and making the request of Him and feeling connected to Him. But let's break it down. Somebody's chas shalom sick. Or somebody is lacking in parnasa, need money. So we come into davening, we turn to God, and we say, Hashem, help. This person is sick, help them and heal them. I don't know about you, but I always have an issue with it. It's difficult sometimes to doubt. Them. And the reason is because, paradoxically, because I actually believe in Hashem. It stems from emuna, not from lack thereof, I think. Which means, if I believe in Hashem, then it's just a little bit strange. Like, what are you saying? Hashem needs me to ask Him to make this person well? Like, you're God. You know what you're doing. Who am I asking that the person should be cured? Right? If you're going to a doctor and you're asking a doctor, listen, doctor, doctor, this person has a problem. Can you cure the person? So the doctor didn't make the problem. The doctor just looks at the issue and hopefully the doctor can find a solution and a cure and, you know, and help him. But if I'm turning to God, God is the one who makes everything happen in the first place. So he made this person sick and now you want me to ask you to make this person well? And it's just strange. Yeah, if you get up and you make a mishabeirach and you say, please, Hashem, I want this person to be cured. And then the person's cured, why? Because you asked for it. You get the problem, something's wrong. It's a foundation in davening. Like, who? What are we accomplishing in davening? What is in general the goal of davening? To ask Hashem to do something. But Hashem knows what he's doing and he can just do what he wants and he can in any way do it. So what does he need me to ask him for? It's a bit strange. And, um, and davening is actually the, the, as we'll see, literally the backbone of Judaism. And when you don't have an answer to this question, anyone else have an issue? Yeah. So if you haven't got an answer to this question, I think it actually chisels away at your ability to really and truly mean it and to daven with a full heart. Because if it's not real, I'm not davening, I'm just pretending, paying lip service to davening. And then it's not real. So, there was an individual, he was a very strange individual, actually. But he taught us how to daven. And that individual was a man by the name of Bil'am. He was a prophet who was a non-Jewish prophet, a Gentile, on a par, it says, with Moshe Rabbeinu. So if you want to know what prophecy meant, he was essentially the highest level of prophecy that one could ever achieve. And it just boggles the mind, because the story is that Jews are going on their way to uh, the land of Israel, and as they're marching forward in the desert, King Balak of Moab wants to get rid of them. He's very, very concerned about what the Jews might do to him. And he realizes that these Jews have, are defeating everyone in battle. So he says, okay, but that's not really what they do. Their power is in words. So let's attack them with words and let's find a prophet um, who knows how to get rid of the Jews and curse them. And that's Bilam. So he summons Bilam. Now, I get that Bolok wanted to pay Bilam money to come and curse the Jews. I got that part. What I don't get is that Bilam is a prophet and he knows that he has power only from Hashem. So what's the thinking over here? Get me into your thinking. You're thinking that if you bring the Jews, if you curse the Jews, you'll get your way. How do you curse the Jews? That means to get Hashem to be angry at them. But Hashem took them out of Egypt. And Hashem is guiding them every day and Hashem wants these Jews. So what are you thinking? That you'll convince Hashem to curse them? So it says Bilam was looking for a moment when Hashem was angry. 
and he said, let me latch onto that moment, then I'll be able to do it. Almost like, like to fool Hashem, is that what he's thinking? Like I'll catch him in a weak moment and then I'll be able to destroy them. They're his kids. How are you planning to do this? So Bilam was actually pretty, pretty smart. And what he did was, says, Bilam is like, there's a Bilam inside your head. And this Bilam always finds things that are problematic and wrong. Now, it isn't that difficult, sorry to say, to fault Jews. Jews are a difficult bunch of people. Yes, it's true. Many of the Tsarists out there, if you want to know where anti-Semitism comes from, you will always trace it back to Jews. There's Jews who get upset at other Jews and they kind of like, you know, flame it up. And, uh, and that's where it stems from. So Bilam says, let's look at the negative in the Jews. And let's focus and hone in on that. And he's like, hey, Hashem, you also wanted to get rid of them. Remember when they sinned with the golden calf? For example, Bilam says, let's focus on the negative. And what's fascinating is, as much as he focuses on the negative, he's unsuccessful. Hashem says, they're insane, these Jews. I love them anyway. But when we pay attention to what Bilam was saying, Hashem took every one of his curses and transformed it and flipped it over into a blessing. So because he was so intent on cursing them and hated them so much, that's why he focused and he honed in on core issues of what Jews are about and what faults the Jews. And every time you made a blessing, if you pay careful attention to it, you'll see that therein lies a fundamental core issue of what it means to be a Jew and what faults the Jews. And Hashem took what he said and flipped it over. Let's examine one of those blessings which were originally intended as curses and what Bilam intended and how it flipped over. So Bilam says, Lo hibit aven beyakov. He says, I'm not sure why, but Hashem refuses to, gain, to gaze at any negativity in Yaakov. I'm trying to draw attention to the aven, the injustice, the negativity, and Hashem refuses to focus on it. No matter what I do, He keeps on focusing on only the good, and I cannot get Him to focus on the negative. In other words, what Bilam wanted to do was to focus on the negative. And if he focused on the negative, Bilam gets his way. But Hashem refuses to, and that's how we get the blessing out of us. So let's unpack these words. Rohibit aven Yaakov. Hashem refuses to gaze at any negativity in Yaakov. amal Israel. He doesn't see anything negative in Israel. Bilam is referring to the Jews by two names. The two names we are known by are the names of our forefather, Yaakov Avinu, who was the founder of the Jewish people. And he had two names. One name is Yaakov, and the other one name, name is Israel. Now, Yaakov and Israel actually signify two opposite experiences of Judaism. Because Yaakov is Yud Akev. He was named Yaakov because he was holding on to the heel. So Yud Akev is Yaakov. Yisrael is the name he was given after he fought the angel and successfully defeated him. Yisrael is the same letters as Li Rosh. Yisrael, Li Rosh. Hashem says, you are my head. So can you see how Yaakov is about the heel, the bottom of the body, and Yisrael is about the head. The question in life is, which one are you? And Hashem says, actually, I want you to be both. There's an advantage to both. When we dive in Rosh Hashanah, we turn to Hashem and we say, In kebanim, in kavadim. There's about an advantage to being a child. When you're a child, you relate to Hashem as a father. It's very special and unique. We like to call ourselves Hashem's children. Yes. But there's another relationship which we have with God, and that is as servants. Avadim. And there's a big advantage to being an Eved Hashem. A servant of Hashem means 
that you don't see God, right? Children, they like they're an extension of you. But your servant is a separate being from you. Hashem wants us to serve Him. That means to be in a position of not wanting and to work our way to get there. We call this Avodat Hashem, the service of God. And let's take a look at what it means to be Oved Hashem, to be an Eved Hashem. So Yisrael is a child, a son. That's why you're a head. And Yaakov is when you're in the heel, you're in the dirt, in the, in the lowest part of the body. And that's what it means to be a servant. You don't get Hashem and yet you serve Him. Okay? Hashem wants Avadim, Avdei Hashem. Now, if you hire a servant, or in the olden days, when you had a slave, right? So you're the master, and the other person is the slave. But clearly, you need the slave, otherwise why would you be asking him to do things for you? So the servant is doing things for you that you cannot do yourself. That's what it means to be an Eved, working for the master. We Jews are Avadim to Hashem. There's this thing called Avodat Hashem. It says in Kriyat Shema, Uleovdo bechol levavchem, to serve Hashem in all your heart. But let's take a look at this. What does it mean to be an Eved of Hashem? What could Hashem possibly need that you could do for Him? You're a servant of Hashem means you're serving Him. So if a servant serves you uh, a drink, right, and pours you a drink or gives you a food, okay, so you didn't have food and now you do. But what could you give to Hashem? But does He need, maybe you need that. But does Hashem need you to proclaim Him as King? Does Hashem benefit anything from what any human being can give Him? What could you possibly give Him that He's lacking? After all, everything comes from you. You created everything. You are everything. Nothing exists outside of Hashem. And here we have a big, big, big problem. It's a big problem. It's the problem of the believing Jew. The believing Jew gets that what is Hashem? Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch. That means is, was, and will be. Past, present, and future. Always. Hashem was there before the world was created. There was only Hashem. Nothing besides Hashem. Hashem will be there after the world ceases to exist. And even now, when you think you exist, it's not real. Hashem is the only true reality. In fact, here's the problem, right? Big problem we have. If you ponder what it means, what God is, you'll come to realize God is above time, right? Now, this is where human beings actually, like, we shatter our existence. What does it mean to be above time? Hashem creates time. So, He Himself transcends time. Right? So, what does that mean? He created time itself. Now, for a human being living in this world to understand that is to shatter every fiber of your existence. That's why when we talk about, about the world, what do we call it? We call it olam. What's olam? Elem, concealment. It's, you don't see Hashem. Hashem creates time and space. So that means when did He create it? You're just asking that question because you're a creation who asks questions which are time related. But actually, you don't, He, he didn't make you yesterday and tomorrow you won't be Everything is God and there's only Hashem and nothing exists besides Hashem. So what do you need me for? I'm here to be serving you. What does that mean to be serving you? Right? That's the problem. The problem is I don't understand who I am and what I'm about if I believe in Hashem and Hashem is timeless, spaceless. He's above the entire tempo spatial existence. He is. What Hashem wants, and here's the key. Why does Hashem need you to serve Him? What does He want from you? Now listen to this. We're not going to learn why. We're only going to learn what. The reason is, because when you believe that Hashem is everything, so then you don't need me. So there's a weaken, it weakens your ability to serve Hashem. Because when you walk into davening, right, 
How important is davening to you? If you really believe in Hashem, davening is not so important. Big deal. Davening. I ask him. Okay, I'll ask you for what I need. I don't feel like my life depends on it. Because worst case scenario, you can do whatever you want anyway. You're God. So you don't need me. What we want is to find an explanation to why Hashem needs us that's good enough to make our davening really, really real. That you'll daven like your life depends on it. But if you don't understand why, it's okay. As long as you have enough power to daven. The answer to this question, this very, very fundamental question in Judaism, is given by the rabbis in a medrash. And the medrash says as follows, Nitzava hakadosh baruchu lihiyot lo dira betachtonim. God wanted to have a home in this world. Here's what that means. Hashem says, I'm everything. Everything's me. That's it. But here's the story. You don't know that. You, take a look at yourself, you get anxieties from things that happen out in the world. So, I'm telling you the truth is, it's all me. If you are aware of that, that's great. But you're not. So you live in a reality which disguises the truth of what Hashem is. In your reality, things are difficult, things are hard. So we'll often say, okay, see, that for you, not for Hashem. Correct. You are. And that's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants to create people who don't get him and don't see him and those people in their reality should need Hashem. So there's only one thing Hashem can't do, so to speak. And what's that? Hashem's like, okay, I'm going to hide the truth from you people. I'm going to create humans who don't get it. They don't sense that I am it, it. So if you learn about it, you're like, okay, but Hashem is everything. Yeah, but you don't get it, right? You're still struggling, you're still suffering, you still see only the negative. That's what it means, you're in the ache, you're in the heel. You don't see the head, you don't see Hashem. Hashem says, I want that you, in your reality, should get me. Now, take an analogy, right? There's electricity in the air everywhere. Electricity is the power. There's, there's internet in the air everywhere. Internet, electricity, they are natural phenomena. The fact that we didn't have electricity or internet for millennia is only because we didn't know that they were in existence. They were always there. It's just a matter of there's a certain power. If you move a certain power in a certain way, that's electric power, right? So now we discover this electricity. What do we do? We put these wires and there's electricity flowing through the wires. So in the wall is an outlet. And in that outlet is electricity flowing through. Now there's only one thing you gotta do. And that is, take your appliance and plug it in. If you plug it in, then the electricity which is already there will flow through your appliance. But if you don't plug it in, the fact that there's electric, electric power flowing through will mean nothing to you. The electric power needs to flow and you need to plug into that power. So let's take a look at this analogy. There is divine power everywhere. Hashem says, everything is God. But you are not aware of that. So you live in a reality where things are hard and difficult. What you do is you see someone sick. And you say, he's sick, but Hashem, you're the one who's doing it. And Hashem says, yes. Here's what I want you to do. In your reality where you see him ill, where you don't see that, I want you to plug in yourself to God and to find Hashem there. That's called Dira Betachtoini. Make a home for Hashem in this lowly realm. In this lowly realm, in this lowly world. You got it? So again, what's the answer to the question? The answer is like this. Hashem says, I am everything. Everything is me. I don't need you. You don't need to dive into me. It's all okay. It's all good. I do it. Now, I'm going to hide myself. I'm going to create a reality where you don't see me. We're going to call it Tachtonin, the lowly world. 
And I want that you as a human being in that place should find me. So what am I going to do for that? I'm going to create problems. Problems are not problems. They're actually opportunities. And I'm going to withhold myself from the world. That's why people become sick. That's why there's lacking of money. That's why there's sorrows in the world. All the problems in the world, what are they? A space void of God for you to find Hashem in it. That's all it is. Now what you want to do is fill it up with God's presence. Now, why would God do that again? Like, if Hashem is everything, why does He need to do this process? I'm not telling you why. He's not revealing to us why. In other words, if He's God and He's everything, so why would He hide Himself and remove Himself from the picture and like, why don't you just do it yourself? He's like, I'm not telling you that. Because all I want is that you should daven like your life depends on it. And I'll tell you enough information about the story for you to want to daven like your life depends on it. What's that information? Hashem does everything. And he, then he hides himself in this world. And what he wants is that you should plug into the outlet. What's the outlet? The outlet is godly energy. And when you plug into that divine energy, you find Hashem. So whenever something goes wrong in your life, it's not going wrong. The Zohar says, when the sitra achra, the evil forces, the negative forces are subdued, Hashem is revealed in this world. Hashem is right there. All you got to do is push against the negative forces. So there's these forces coming into your life all the time. And what you want to do is push, 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 push. That's it. You don't need to solve problems. All you need to do is get into a good space with Hashem in life. That's it. All you got to do is find yourself aligned, attached, and connected to God. That's how you plug it in. And why does God need this? Because He wants humans who live in a reality which is non-godly to find Him. That's why. So now you see why you should have When something goes wrong, you say, but Hashem, you're doing it anyway. Correct. But I want you in your reality. But you don't see it. I want you to dive into me and to have bitachin and to feel Hashem's presence in your life and to let go. Now, in order to do this properly, what we need to do is called davening. So, David Amalek, when he says, when he wants to describe himself, he says, you know who I am? Vani Tfila. I'm a I'm not, I don't pray to God. Like, I am a tefillah. I am a prayer. What is a Jew? He's a being who constantly reconfigures his settings and aligns himself with Hashem. All the time. That's what he does. Now, we forgot that. We lost that art in life. In the modern world, we're so trained to get things done, solve problems, right? Get things sorted out. That we forget to align who we are. And so we get stuck with mental health challenges. Davening in the morning is your formal time to build and work on your relationship with Hashem. To plug into the system so that later on in real time, when all the tension comes your way, you can find Hashem in the moment. So in the morning we have a big davening. And then in real time, what do we do? We have little davenings. Small, brief tefillah. What's it called? A bracha. When something happens, you say, Baruch Hashem, 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 And you draw Hashem into that moment. And davening is the big opportunity. So, there's this beautiful analogy that Gemara says that... Um, well, davening is, is considered to be... Is davening a mitzvah? Is there a mitzvah to daven? The Gemara says it's not a mitzvah. Nope. There's 248 mitzvahs. Davening is not one of them. Davening is, um, is actually... Is actually... Um, so the Rambam writes about the Farshim right that there's a mitzvah to, to serve Hashem and when you need something you ask for it but the whole idea this whole discussion amongst the 
Maskim, but the whole idea of davening as shachris, sitting down and doing that, that's not a mitzvah sasa de raisa, according to most Paskim. It's only a mitzvah. Interesting, because it's probably one of the most important things we do in Judaism, is the daven, why is it not a mitzvah? The answer why it's not a mitzvah is because it's not a mitzvah, it's everything. You can't just call it a mitzvah. So the Gemara gives an analogy. In the human being, in the human brain, there's a, there's a body. There's a skeleton which holds the body, the bones. Now, the body, the skeleton together with the limbs, there are altogether 248 limbs in the human body. Ramach Eivarim. Okay? And the Gemara proceeds to explain each one. The Mishnah lists each one of these ones, what it is exactly. There is one limb which is not listed in the 248 limbs. And it's very interesting. Why not? Very significant because it's probably the most important limb of the body. The most important limb of the body is the spinal cord. The chut hashidra. Why is it so important? Because it says without, when the other ones are broken or whatever, you could live. Chut hashidra is broken, it's impossible to live. Because it, it's the support that sustains the entire body. It takes the brain and brings it down to the rest of the body. Now, the, in other words, this is, there's, a, there's a spinal cord. Then there's the 18 vertebra, which come from it. That is the skeleton. From that, everything else comes in. And once you have a skeleton, now you can put in limbs and hold the body inside there. Without it, you can't hold the body. So the 248 limbs are the mitzvahs that you do. That's the being of what it means to be a Jew. The skeleton, the skull, the, not the, skull, the spinal cord in the middle, davening is the spinal cord, and it's upheld by 18 vertebra. Davening means shmonaisa. It's held up by 18 vertebrae, which are the 18 brachas of Shmone Esrei. It's not, just like the spinal cord is not a limb of the body, so too davening is not a mitzvah. Not because the spinal cord is not important, it's because it's so important that you can't just call it a limb, it's everything. And so too davening is not something, davening is everything. Without davening, you have nothing. <coughs> Davening is the foundation of everything. What's davening about? Some people think davening is a bit boring. It's the same thing every single day. But davening is actually where you make a change, a real change. What is davening about? There is a problem in the world, and I'm going to bring Hashem into this problem and thereby transform this problem. So you look at problems in the world, you see, okay, there's no money. I have a problem with money. Do you know why you have a problem with money? Because Hashem wants attention, that's why. And the only way for Hashem to get attention is by causing a problem, and then you solve that problem, bingo, God revealed. So davening is the moment, the space, whereby you connect to Hashem, attach yourself to Hashem, and build that relationship. Once you get that idea that there are no problems, it's all about revelation of God in this world, now you have the ability. Now there's a, there's a foundation. The Gemara says, Man de lekora bemoidim nasa shidrato nachash. Anyone who doesn't bow down, right? Moidim meant bow your head down. If you don't bow your head down, then one day your spine becomes a snake, which seems pretty, pretty intense. It means one day, God, God forbid, the person gets into the grave. And when they do, if you didn't bow down in Moedim, right? When you say Moedim, you meant bow down until your, actually, until your vertebra in the back bend over. So, if you don't do that, the punishment is that your spine becomes a snake. In Hasidic thinking, that's not something that's going to happen one day. It's telling you currently what's going on in your life. If your life is not one where you submit to the divine, then the spine is the foundation of your life, that which holds you up. The nachash, the snake, is the root of evil. 
we all have a foundation to our lives, a spine. What's the spine? The spine is your core beliefs. So you believe. In the West, we believe that I need to be happy. Being happy is like an axiom of life. I need to be happy. Then the question is, how am I going to be happy? Generally, the answer is to be successful and achieve my goals and dreams, and then I'll be happy. And when I'm not, I'm sad. If the core, the spine, the foundation of your life is void of God, rest assured, the rest of your life will be stemming from a snake because your spine has become a snake. Do you get the analogy? It means, ask yourself, what is existence about? What am I here for? What's the core of my life? If the core of my life is God, I will have a very successful, happy life. If the core of my life is me, I will always fall short. It depends on what my goals are. What am I trying to achieve? Right? What do I want to get to? Hashem is telling us that davening needs to be the foundation of living. What's davening? Anything that happens, I relate to God. When someone becomes sick, I say, Hashem, Almighty God, someone is sick. There's a problem. Can you help? And I'm going to trust in you and believe in you and feel the presence throughout. And I'm going to work in myself all the time to get into a space of joy, to get into a space of simcha, to feel Hashem's presence. If you don't have that, everything falls apart. Everything is destroyed. So the foundation of living must be about God. You know, it's interesting. There's a... In 1981, there was an attempted assassination of President Ronald Reagan. Remember that? And the guy who did it wasn't even sure why he did it. It wasn't like it made any sense. The guy who did it basically was a bored soul, came from a very wealthy family, and was just something about him, unhappy. And then, you know, we just had another one of them this week. An attempted assassination. So the Lubavitcher ever spoke about attempted assassinations. He wrote a letter to Reagan. They were exchanging letters. And he writes to him about this. And then he spoke about it. Out of a brain. And he described, discussed assassinations. And the idea was as follows. The idea was that if a guy is about to shoot and someone's watching him and he knows that he's going to be caught, then he's likely, or less likely, to take out the gun and shoot. When you're being watched and you know there's someone looking at you, then you're less likely to do it on a very basic level. We hope. Right? There's a superpower called Hashem. If you have the most basic beliefs in God, if you just know that there's someone up there and there's a super being and you are, you're liable for what happens and and there's someone out there, there's a God, then you're less likely to do stupid things like that. And so what happened in America is we created a godless society. Back in the day, what happened was in the public schools, there used to be a mention of God. And then, you know, obviously some Jews decided to fight it, Constitution, because they were so scared. They would bring in, you know, uh, other religions. And so they decided, lest, God forbid, anyone brings in any other religion, let's take every religion out. And the whole point is that the Constitution is about not, not serving God, but rather serving whichever God you want. So don't take it out, but rather give people the free choice. But once you took God out of the Constitution, out of public schools, what do you think is going to happen? People who don't have God in their life create a godless society. It was actually quite fascinating how, um, you know, after the assassination attempt this week, he wrote and he said that the realization that a little tilt of the head is all that it took. So... It was like a recognition that that was the hand of God. That like, had he fired literally a millisecond before and my head was facing that way, that would have been the end of me. And the recognition there's a God, that's powerful. 
Because if someone who's trying to run for president is, is, um, is recognizing God, that brings a very powerful message to America. A society that doesn't have God, Shidrato becomes a nachash, the spine, the foundation of it becomes a snake. Everything that stems from it starts to be negative. What we want is to find Hashem in real time. What we want is to realize Hashem into our lives. Your life becomes an absolute joy. Because when, you, when something's going bad and negative, you say, ooh, it's not happening to me. It's happening for me. And if it's happening for me, what does that mean? It's all good. You see how when you bring God into the picture, life changes completely. It's a whole different world. And that's why it's not another mitzvah to daven. Davening is the space whereby a Jew sits down and he says, okay, there's a God. There's an Abish in the world. And what does Hashem want? Hashem wants me to clean up this dirty apartment and build a home for him. And the house, the space is dirty. That means there's a lot of opportunity in this world for mitzvahs. It's a beautiful world. But it's really, really, really dirty. And so my goal is to clean it up. How do I clean it up? Simple. The problems of the world go right into your heart. And you have to to serve Hashem in all your heart. What does that mean? Find joy. Joy. Find absolute simcha in your heart. There's only one way to find joy, and that is if you have emunah in Hashem. And so when a person's sick, God forbid, when a person's ill, what are you meant to do? You're meant to A, turn to God and say, Hashem, please, I'm asking you to cure him. And then you go right back into a space of recognizing that whatever Hashem is doing is good. And therefore, I see God in my life. Ah, I see Hashem, it's great. That's why the person's sick. That's why in Shemayna Esrei, in those 18 vertebrae, what do we do? We're building vertebrae, which are receptacles to hold the Shechina, the Divine Presence. So the Shechina is in davening, that's the spinal cord. And the 18 vertebrae are opportunities. The person's not sick. It's just that you have an opportunity to find Hashem, where you see the person as sick. And so that's why we dab him. Hashem, please. Hashem Please, cure, cure this person. Help. And when you finish the bracha, you say, okay, now I'm going to plug in to the outlet. The godliness, the divine energy. So at the end of every request from Hashem, you say, Baruch, Ata, Hashem. What does that mean? Baruch, I'm drawing down you, O oh God. I'm drawing down the godliness of Hashem to come right down into the space. I want to bring Hashem down. So I'm recognizing Hashem, you're the cure of all being. So any opportunity, any, any problem that comes to your life is nothing short of a golden opportunity that you have to discover the power of Hashem in your life. I spoke once to this lady and um, I don't think I've ever seen someone who literally lived with Hashem in a way that I can't begin to imagine. She went through a very, 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 very challenging childhood. Like, really challenging. I mean, long story, but she, um, she lost her mother when she was very, very young. And then she was, she lost her father also and then she was taken in by foster parents and they were trying to save her um, and, and in the process she was abused so she grew up in the most abusive kind of home you could ever imagine and she described what it's like to be a little kid who has no protector in the world nothing a little kid and undergoing living in a from community very nice place going to a from school and everything around seems perfection 
and she's pretending to the whole world like everything's perfect and coming home and being beaten up and being tied up and whatever else is going on having to come out and just pretend everything's normal and then finally when she's old enough something happened and she's able to get out and and she and she escapes now she doesn't go back from one morning to the next she doesn't go back in the afternoon and some rabbis get involved and she describes the scene she says i'm talking to this rabbi and you know describing to him what happened and he looks at me and he says do you have a do you drink and she says no take drugs no do you have a tattoo she says, no what do you mean and he's like i don't understand people who go through what you went through when they get to this point they just like they look to go crazy in some way or another she says no and he looks at her and he says how'd you do it and she says i don't know but i'll tell you this much whenever something was happened to me in my life and i questioned god all the time growing up i mean i took it for granted this is my life this is what it is didn't think to run away didn't think there's any other opportunity of what else i could do but i felt Hashem in the most palpable, real way. It's like, I don't understand. I just like, I would talk to him. And he's, he's my friend. There's no one else to talk to. And she says, I would talk to Hashem. And he was just absolute and real to me. I was listening to her. And she was talking about, she was telling me about Torah on, on, um, how Moshe Rabbeinu, when he took, right, the Jews were being plagued by the snake. So Moshe Rabbeinu tells, Hashem tells him, take a snake, put it on a copper snake and put it on a, on a pole, and then uh, the Jews should daven. She says, like, man, why? I heard this voice. She says, why do you have to daven through the snake? Just daven to Hashem. And what it means is that there's no way to daven to Hashem without looking through your snake. The snake is all your negativity, all the bad that happens to you. And when you daven through your snake, it means you realize nothing's happening to you. It's happening for you. And it's just there for you to find a deeper connection with God. I've heard that voice about the snake many, many, many times in my life. I never heard the vort alive like I heard it from her. It wasn't a vort It wasn't just like a you know an idea being communicated I, I tell you I literally I sat there and I, I, I just I felt Hashem it felt like this person is communicating and you feel God in the room when you live that way the harshest most challenging most difficult life that she endured and she really did and she suffered from it but it just made her strong and made her resilient. And made, she's got a beautiful family today. Like, she's, I was, I was just blown away. Married, great kids, great marriage, everything. <laughs> she said, the Shadchan once told me that who's going to marry you anyway, where you come from? <laughs> she said, and she was right. But Hashem had other plans. And so it worked. When you live with Hashem at the epicenter of your life, and that's what davening is, your life becomes a blessing. You could be from the wealthiest family in the greatest life, and you go try to assassinate the president. Why? Because you don't have God in your life. If you don't bow down to Hashem, and you don't submit, and you don't feel God in your life, then your shedra, your spine, your core is a snake. And when you bow down to Hashem, and everything that happens, you let go. Bowing down, I'm letting go. I'm submitting my head. I'm realizing that the things that happen in life are merely the opportunities for me to say Shemana Esrei. What's Shemana Esrei? Find 18 things going on in your life, 18 core things in your life that are going on. And say, Hashem, I'm asking you to help me and I'm noticing that you're in, in the situation. I'm finding you in there. What's davening about? Hashem doesn't need you correct. You're right. 
He needs you for one thing. He needs you because he says, okay, there's a reality where you don't get a shem. And I'm asking you to do is to plug in and find the shem in that reality. You ready to do it? If you're ready to do it, what it means is to look at every situation that happens in your life, every negative something that goes on in your life, and to say, I'm asking Hashem for help, and I'm feeling joy. How do you feel joy? By looking through your anxiety, by turning to Hashem and saying, I recognize that Hashem, you're doing it for me, and everything that's happening to me is good, and it's all wonderful and great. This work is really hard work. It's very, very, very difficult. But it is the foundation of life. Because if you do it correctly, then afterwards you go out and you say, okay, now I'm going to go do mitzvahs. Because now the world around you is just a beautiful place. To some people, you know, it's this, the story is a guy came to the Rebbe Roshab once. And he said, where are you from? He said, Kharkov. He said, what's happening in Kharkov? He says, oh, beautiful. People are dominating and learning. And there's, it was a meaning every day. And then we sit down and we learn. And there's like Tehillim we say every, afterwards. And, and we, we have a whole chevra to keep tzedakah and do kindness and chesed together. And it's just, it's so much, so much chesed going on in the community. You should see, like, people help with any little thing that goes on. We have this whole group of people in this group. And it just finds, and the rabbi gives him a beautiful coin. He says, thank you for the good news. Right after him, another Jew walks in. He says, where are you from? He says, Kharkov. He says, what's happening in Kharkov? He says, you wouldn't believe it, Rabbi. He says, people are just disgusting. You should see there's, there's these things, there's clubs going on at night, boys and girls getting together, drinking, and there's just terrible, terrible, terrible things. There's a little shul in the corner there, like a few guys doing some good things, but the majority is just terrible. People just forgot about Hashem. And, and nastiness, craziness. The Rabbi says, thank you very much. Later on, the two of them get to meet. And they describe it. One says, the other one, what happened? And he says, the rabbi gave me a, a, a coin. He says, that's not fair. So later on, he comes back to the rabbi and he says, rabbi, what's going on here? He got a coin, I don't. It's face the reality. I told you the truth of what goes on. What I said is true. What he said described a few little people in there who do whatever it is. And the rabbi looks at him and he says, I gotcha. I get it. I know what's going on in Kharkov. My question was, which Kharkov do you live in? That's all I wanted to know. What's the world to you? That's the question. When you daven, the world becomes to you a gorgeous, beautiful place. Because it's a space where you can do mitzvahs. When you don't daven, and if you allow the anxieties of the world to penetrate you by looking at the news and watching and getting part of it, then you feel the world's falling apart. And your life today, not one day, becomes a snake. What does a Jew do? A Jew gets up in the morning. He says, okay, let's talk to Hashem. Hashem, I want to say Shema Nesri, but I can't because I'm not ready for it yet. So first, let's do the preparation. It's okay, the Zimna. What's that? Let's think about Hashem. Talk about God. Hashem is great. Wow, look at all the things Hashem does. Then let's see how the angels all praise Hashem. Great. That's the, the brachas before Shema. Then let's say the Shema. What's that? Realizing what a Jew is, Shema Yisrael. Wow. At all this, Hashem made me in the middle of it. Hashem made problems in the world for me, the little Jew, to find Hashem. Because everything's really God. What does God want? He wants me, the Jew, to serve Him. Oh, wow. Now I'm saying Shemin Esrei. What Shemin Esrei? I'm realizing, Baruch Atah Hashem. Life is about me drawing Hashem down into this reality. I've got a problem with money. Baruch Hashanim. Bring Hashem down. I've got a problem with, with cure. Bring Hashem down. Whatever I see Hashem, now the world is just opportunities to find Hashem. What a beautiful, gorgeous, stunning reality I occupy if I decide that I'm occupying that reality. Oh, now you finished davening? Okay, let's go find opportunities. And you go find mitzvahs. They roll over. And whenever you do a mitzvah, you say, wow, I'm going to draw Hashem down. Baruch Hashem. You're the king of this problem. Asher ki deshanum and you're able to sanctify me in your mitzvahs. My life becomes this beautiful, gorgeous space of looking for Hashem everywhere. Bilam looks at the Jewish people and he says, they got so many problems, so much. And he wants to focus on the negativity. And he says, I don't know what to do. Lohi bit aven biyakov. Whenever Hashem looks at these Jews and they look at themselves and they figure out and they plug into Hashem, what do they see? He does an Avera, what does he see? Oh great, opportunity for tshuva. He's missing something. He says, what a great space, opportunity to daven and to feel Hashem's presence in my life. And Hashem refuses to focus on the iniquity. He refuses to focus on the negative in Yaakov. And Bilam's going crazy over that. He says, why Hashem? 
And the answer to the question is in the next pasuk, which is, Hashem Elokav Imo. Because Hashem, His God, is with Him. When Hashem is ever present in your life, nothing ever goes wrong. Whatever happens is always an opportunity. So, what's davening about? Davening is about our ability to take our lives and make it special. Make our lives holy. To make our lives worthwhile. Our lives are godly. Everything in our lives is absolutely divine, special. But it just depends on us. And so there's no mitzvah to daven, per se. But if you daven, your whole life becomes a reality of godliness, of divine energy. And there's nothing more powerful than the ability to submit yourself to say, it's God, it's Hashem, it's Hashem, it's Hashem. And whenever you do that, you discover the beauty and this incredible power of what it means to serve Hashem. Because you can do something for Hashem, Hashem can't do for Himself. And that is to find Hashem in a reality which is void of Hashem. And you discover Him right there.